Hello everyone and welcome to the second Google Partners Hangout on Air of 2016. I'm Joseph McEntee. Hey, I'm Laura. Um, I'm working as an account strategist on the UK agency team. So today we're going to be talking to you about capturing seasonal opportunities, in particular Valentine's Day. Um, you know, a lot of the things we're going to be talking about today won't just be in relation to Valentine's Day. Um, so please do bear in mind that uh, Easter and Mother's Day are just around the corner as well. So you should be able to take a lot of the learnings from today and apply them uh, to these other seasonal opportunities. And for Valentine's Day, we're looking at uh, the 10-day countdown. Getting close. Nervously close. <laughs> <laughs> so look, um, as an agency, um, what I'd like to challenge you guys to do um, is start thinking on an individual basis, you know, what are those perfect gifts I'd like to receive? Be it um, a nice techie new gadget, um, chocolates, flowers. So it's hint hotels. dropping time. Yeah, what hint dropping. Yeah, I hope my partner's watching it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it start thinking about what you'd like yourself and start thinking, do you have any clients who might fall in, into these categories? Um, the other thing is we're going to show you some uh, nice stats. All of these stats will be available from your um, Google rep. So please don't be afraid to reach out to us afterwards and we'll be more than happy to share these. So what does that Valentine's opportunity look like? Well, we know that some very, very organized people out there have started um, searching for Valentine's queries up to six weeks in advance of Valentine's Day. I think Day. that's pretty impressive. Like yeah. The amount of people that seem to be searching that far in advance is shocking to me, but that's, it seems to be the case. That's very impressive. Yeah. I, I'd be more be a two weeks in advance type of person, and luckily that's exactly how um, much we have uh, sure. to work with before Valentine's. Uh, but yeah, it goes all the way back to six weeks. The other really interesting thing is that people are looking towards Google for inspiration and looking especially to YouTube for inspiration. 79% year-on-year growth for Valentine's queries on YouTube um, alone. So that gives you an opportunity as an ad advertiser to start thinking, right, how do I influence that upper fat funnel to start influencing uh, incremental sales instead of just waiting for sales to fall into my lap? Uh, the other interesting thing as well is that mobile queries for Valentine's Day have been increasing 60% year on year. And it's pretty now, incredible, 60%. It is, yeah. yeah. We've been talking about the important role of mobile um, today. And now 60% of all queries for Valentine's Day are made, made on mobile devices. I guess devices. it makes sense, though, to people who are kind of doing searches privately. Exactly, kind of yeah. If you're looking for that special gift for someone special, someone close to you in your life, you're not going to use a shared device like a desktop computer or a, a, a PC. For sure. Um, so it makes sense that you do it on a mobile device. Audience insights, This uh, the top gifts, this... Um, Valentine's are cards, surprise, surprise, <laughs> flowers, chocolates, romantic meals, gifts, fragrances. We can probably add uh, hotel breaks, travel into there, and um, tech gadgets. All Basically of these. everything that's nice in life. <laughs> yeah, everything that you can think <laughs> Coming of. Coming up as top want. gifts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah what you didn't get for Christmas, now's your chance. <laughs> um, now, a controversial point here. Um, women tend to spend the most time researching. Whereas it's actually men that spend the most money. So um, controversial. Yeah, indeed. controversial. Indeed. <laughs> but um, interesting to know that 42% uh, of men say they plan to spend more than £20 this Valentine's Day. And 29% um, of women say they plan to spend more than £20 uh, coming well, up to Valentine's Day. So for every advertiser, regardless of who they are, for people who are looking for Valentine's searches, almost half of their male audience, essentially, are going to be looking for their search terms. Right exactly, and nearly one in three females as well. So, you know, it's, it's quite a significant chunk of the population um, that they can, they can get exactly. incremental sales from. So, what are they searching for? There's a lot of cool external tools that you guys can use to identify, is your product one of those products that, that is likely to see a, an incremental um, search uplift. Uh, we've taken flower deliveries, personalized gift and uh, gifts and chocolates and popped them into Google Trends and we can see there's a very clear uplift in um, in February because of Valentine's and that's expected to 
run right on true, true until uh, Mother's Day, which we know is coming up in March. Brilliant. So uh, for any kind of seasonal or specific terms, you could have a look, pop into Google Trends and put in the specific terms yourself. Exactly. And it goes down to um, very specific sub-verticals as well. Uh, the other thing is, um, when we talk at, take a look at the top rising uh, trends, we can see that your generic search trends, uh, search terms are, are the most um, popular, both in terms of query volume and query, um, query growth. So we can see Valentine's Day presents for him, um, you know, very, very generic. And it's up to you as an advertiser to start thinking, right, how do we turn this opportunity into a, actual sales, how do we make something very generic, you know, into, um, and how do we influence that and, you know, literally answer that question for a user, can you please give me that perfect Valentine's Day uh, idea, just drop it into my lap. So, um, what you can also do is start thinking about the times of day when people are searching. And very important to know between the hours of 6 and 10 p.m., that's where we see the most searches. Again, stands to reason people on their mobile devices uh, coming home from uh, work as well and commuting. Interesting enough as well to remember that uh, to leave enough budget for your um, for weekends as well. When people like me out on the high street looking for gifts, not getting ideas, start to panic, panicking. God, is this how much a bottle of perfume costs? <laughs> And um, can I get it cheaper online? Um, so make sure you're there present as well. So that's interesting as well, because we know Valentine's drops on a Sunday this year. So it's important to kind of note in your calendar that on the Friday evening, make sure you've got plenty of budget to open up on those terms for the weekend to make sure people like Joe, make sure that they find you when they search. <laughs> exactly, yes, please do. <laughs> um, so you can also use analytics to identify in the past what type of um, search, um, what type of trends you can expect to see based on past data. Now we've taken the uh, Google store in this case um, and we can see, we can break down as far as acquisition and channels to see, okay, what are the top referring terms um, in maybe for direct, maybe for paid search, uh, organic referral, whatever that may be, and start to see how well do they convert and should we bid on them as well. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Laura now. Great. So essentially what we're seeing is that we're, there seems to be a huge growth in those generic searches and that you have so much wealth of information there in analytics. Analytics is a gold mine in terms of actually looking at when your own peaks are coming in and when to then adjust your keywords and your targeting. So if we're seeing those generics kind of really come into play this year as the main source of volume and as well as that seeing a lot of people going and searching for inspiration and searching on their mobile, it's can be a little bit tricky for new advertisers to figure out exactly how to find their audience. So essentially, there's two really simple, really quick ways that you can then find your exact audience, and those are customer match and RLSA lists. So customer match, firstly, we've got another 11s series on that. So just pop into the library if you're new to customer match and you want to get a play-by-play -play of exactly how that works and how to implement it. But essentially what customer match is, is using your customer email lists from the CRM and just applying those to campaigns so that you're ensuring that you're actually targeting your own customers regardless of where they signed up. So they could be online, offline, mobile and so on and you know that you can target specifically the people who maybe purchased from you this time last year, signed up for a loyalty program. It's incredible. So then secondly, we can look at remarketing lists for search ads, so RLSA. Again, there's another Levinses on this, so you can look back on that on using RLSA lists with your shopping. So pop back on that if you want to play by play. But essentially what we're doing here is gathering information of people who visited your website and assorting them into different kinds of lists depending on how likely they are to buy. So for example, if Joe bought uh, some jewelry for his girlfriend at Christmas and he knows that he really appreciates your brand and he got great customer service, he got great delivery time, and he goes back and searches for Valentine searches, you want to make sure that you show for him because he's more likely to buy another gift from you knowing he was really happy with you the first time. Sound about right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Sorry, I keep using you as an example here. <laughs> um, so to look at exactly what we're talking about here, it's you, knowing what your customers are doing and knowing who your customers are and then driving your message to tailor it to those customers. So I think the beauty of customer match in particular is that you can target people regardless of device. 
So as we're seeing a lot of people kind of doing the commuter search on the way home or having a bit of cheeky search at home where you know your other half can't see it, that's where the mobile will come into play. And for customer match, it doesn't matter how they actually came to, to you know, put their email into your business, whether it's a loyalty program online or offline, you can still directly target them regardless of device. You can target them on YouTube, which we can see that incredible spike in YouTube activity year on year, and also in Gmail. So if you think of the most private way to target someone is through their Gmail. So think about offering loyalty offers, for example, so say 50% Valentine's discount or that lovely spa breakaway, and you can deliver that directly into one of your customers' Gmail accounts. So if I'm a hotel um, looking to do maybe a direct mail or an email blast mm -hmm. um, to, to some clients, uh, some customers that stayed in my hotel months ago, would this be a good approach to use then uh, going down the Gmail route? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, they gave you their email, you know that they respond to email, and you can use Gmail there directly to show them that, and it's a full page takeover. So it's a perfect example of how to use it. Perfect. Um, and in terms of then how you can actually use that to target, you've got three options. So you can target customers that you know, which is what we've kind of spoken a lot about up to now, or you can exclude those customers if you just purely want to get full reach. I think for seasonal opportunities, the exclusion is probably less relevant, but that's somewhere you can move towards in the future. And then my favorite is the third option. So reach users similar to your customers. So if you think about it, there's so much stress lately on bridging that offline online gap the cross-device gap, and customer match fills in all those gaps. So reaching similar users to those people who've researched on mobile, for example, and then finding them regardless of where else they search. So finding similar audiences, building out a brand new reach for people that you know are very similar to your existing customers. Um, so this is the audience list framework, and for those of you who's worked with RLSA in the past, this will be really, really well known to you. So for general strategies, we'd usually say start at point number one and literally build up your framework. So target all users, then apply your customer match or your RLSA lists to all campaigns, and just let the data build, and let the data speak for itself. Whereas seasonal strategies might be slightly different. You might skip ahead to step three and four because you already know who your most valuable customers are if, for example, they purchased over the £20 mark, as Joe was talking about before. Then you know that you can have them in your own list and you can skip ahead slightly knowing that you can put slightly higher bids on them and they're slightly more likely to give you more return. So then you just manage your bids based on that, based on the customer funnel and how likely they are to be valuable to you. And if you think of those generics, this is the perfect way to capture your generics. So you won't be competing against all the other people who are searching on the same generic terms, whereas you can just purely target people who've been to your website and have showed loyalty to your brand. And then lastly, step number five is reaching those new or similar users. So think about after your seasonal strategy, after your campaign is over. You've got all this data built up, and then you can use that data to then reach new audiences and carry that into the next seasonal opportunity. So in terms of bidding, people tend to get super scared when they see plus 100%, but I think it's important to actually go through what that means. So with your list, you're given the option of a bid adjustment, and there's two ways to put a bid adjustment on. We have loads more information on this that you can find in the Help Center. If you're confused, you can always go back. There's essentially bid only, where you attach to an existing campaign, and you simply want to bid higher for those users, or if you want to open up a new campaign with just generic terms, you could use target and bid, and then manage your bids according to these percentages. So for retail, for example, we'd say start at plus 100% for all website visitors, because you know that they're valuable, and if they're searching for terms again a second time around a seasonal campaign, you know that you're more likely to get sales from them. But these are the kind of bids we'd suggest starting with. So when people see a bid like 40% or 100%, they kind of go, well, hang on, I don't want to spend 40% or 100% more. But essentially what we're doing is just giving you the best chance to win the auction. So you'll only ever pay a penny more than your closest competitor. So you're just giving yourself the best chance to win that auction so that you can win that sale and get the best ROI. Does that Pop make sense? quiz. Okay. <laughs> What's the maximum uh, bid adjustment for? The maximum bid adjustment for RLSA. So it's 900%. Okay, wow. See, wow, see, a lot of people say wow, and they kind of go 900%. Okay, I don't want to even go near that, but a lot of people are using 900%, and it's purely for that reason. So, okay. for example, if you applied RLSA to a shopping campaign, mm -hmm. and you had plus 900, you're only giving yourself the best chance possible. So, 
starting at 100% is actually fairly mild in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so if I if I bought jewellery for, for my girlfriend at Christmas and I'm again looking at jewellery in the build up to Valentine's Day, I suppose there's a very high likelihood that I'm going to actually purchase. Absolutely, because you know that you purchased from them before, you really liked it, you're obviously looking for it again, you know your girlfriend really likes it, so she's more likely to get <laughs> jewellery to ask you for jewellery again, so absolutely, okay. feel free to use those bids and the beauty of it is it really works in terms of lowering your CPA. Perfect. Cool, so lastly Joe's just going to bring us through a few shopping tips to make sure that your shopping is all shaped up. Absolutely. So shopping is a is a topic we covered before in the Levens um, series. So um, for a more in de detail look into shopping, please do um, refer back to one of the previous um, series. Um, but four simple tips. Firstly, a working feed is a happy feed. Make sure everything's approved. You can see this in your Merchant Center account, but you can also see it in your AdWords account by going into the Tools tab um, and then into Merchant Center feed. And um, if everything's not up and running, please do give us a call and we'll happily um, assist in getting everything uh, in tip-top shape. Optimize for success. Um, when I go into an account and I see all products in one campaign, um, with one ad group, with one bid, regardless of the product, that makes me really sad. <laughs> because there's a huge amount of opportunity. So I'd always encourage you to Organize your merchant center feed in a way that um, you've got maybe labels applied for the top, uh, the hot products for a certain time of the year, um, and then your campaign should actually represent that as well. So maybe you won't want to bid the same amount for a pair of socks as you would for a full suit, for example. So maybe you could even have different priority settings? Like? Different priority settings, yeah, if you're using multiple campaigns. Again, this is something where your, your Google Rep is more than happy to uh, talk you through as well. Be present on mobile. We know mobile works very well. We know people are searching on mobile. Uh, shopping is a, is a mobile um, first uh, format. Um, with a huge mobile format and we see some great returns on, on it. So make sure you're there, make sure your bid adjustment is high enough that you will actually stand a chance with the restricted number of um, ads that are available to show on mobile. And lastly, consider your audience. Uh, Laura has already talked about RLSA and customer match. They are, apl that, that is, they are applicable for shopping as well and um, for or let's say that's no longer in white listing and the same with customer match and um, so yeah feel free to use that. So that's it from us today as I mentioned already everything we mentioned um, in terms of insights are available in a nice uh, one sheet uh, PDF so please do reach out to us and uh, we also have keyword packs with the uh, top generic queries um, and um, yeah, well, hopefully it'll be a very successful Valentine's Day. Absolutely. Lovely chatting to you and happy Valentine's. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>